Welcome back to Around the World in 80 Telescope, a live 24-hour webcast that is part of the 100 Hours of Astronomy project for the International Year of Astronomy. You're joining us at the European Southern Observatory headquarters near Munich in Germany as we visit some of the most advanced telescopes both on and off the planet. We're now going to Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Before we join them, let's find out about them in this video. Welcome to the Arecibo Observatory, home of the world's largest and most powerful telescope for radar and radio astronomy. The Arecibo Observatory, set amid the limestone hills of northwestern Puerto Rico, is a monument to human curiosity, to a quest of understanding that began before the dawn of history. With this instrument, scientists can examine phenomena that occur as close as three kilometers above us in the Earth's atmosphere or probe the hearts of quasars, 10 billion light years away at the very edge of the discernible universe. Since its completion in 1963, the Arecibo Telescope has been used by thousands of scientists, some of whom have made Nobel Prize winning discoveries. The Arecibo Radar Telescope was conceived by William E. Gordon who hit on the idea of using a spherical bowl-shaped reflector fixed on the ground with a movable receiver hanging above it. This permitted the beam to point in a 20-degree range of direction around the zenith, or overhead direction. Such a telescope is most useful in Puerto Rico, a location where the sun, moon, and planets pass almost directly overhead. With the completion in 1997 of the Gregorian reflector system suspended 137 meters above the telescope's dish, the Arecibo telescope remains unmatched in its sensitivity and versatility for radio studies of the atmosphere, the solar system, and the universe. The telescope has a frequency range between 300 megahertz and 10 gigahertz. The Arecibo telescope is huge. The main reflector dish has a diameter of 305 meters and a depth of 51 meters, covering an area almost the equivalent of 26 football fields. The dome containing the Gregorian reflector system is six stories high and weighs 68 metric tons. The size of its reflector is what makes the Arecibo Observatory so useful to scientists from the United States and around the world. A larger size means a larger collecting area, which allows weaker radio signals to be detected and a more accurate measure of particularly interesting sources. The main reflector collects the radio waves and reflects them to the Gregorian reflector system, which concentrates the signal and sends it to the receivers. Information then travels along cables to the main research building, where specialized equipment converts it into digital format uses a computer to analyze it, and finally stores it for future reference. Most of the observing time at the Arecibo Observatory is assigned to receiving, detecting, amplifying, and recording electromagnetic radio signals produced by distant astronomical objects like pulsars, stars, interstellar clouds, galaxies, and quasars. Many of the known pulsars were first discovered at Arecibo, and it is expected that far more will be discovered in the future. The first pulsar in a binary system was discovered by Russell Hulls and Joseph Taylor in 1974. The discovery of this pulsar made possible the confirmation of Einstein's general theory of relativity. Taylor and Hulls were awarded the 1993 Nobel Prize in Physics for that discovery at the Arecibo Observatory. Another famous Arecibo discovery concerns the rapidly rotating pulsar B1257 plus 12, which was found to have three planets in orbit around it, the first Earth-like planets ever detected outside the solar system. The Arecibo Observatory celebrates the International Year of Astronomy with the commitment to operate on a continuous basis 24 hours a day, every day, providing observing time, electronics, computer, travel and logistics support to scientists from all over the world. The universe, yours to discover.
We're now going live to Arecibo. Hello, Arecibo. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you please introduce can you yourself you? and tell me what you do at the, the telescope? I'm Ellen Howell. I'm a staff astronomer here at Arecibo Observatory, and I study solar system objects. And tonight we are looking at an asteroid that comes near the Earth. So can uh, you tell us something about the observatory and its location? We're in Puerto Rico, which is um, in the Caribbean. It's about a thousand miles uh, east of Florida. And um, the... Yes, we see an image now oh. of the dish. Uh, that's it. Yes, that's, that's the picture of the dish. Okay, so uh, what kind of astronomical research is done there? You mentioned uh, yourself are looking at solar system objects. Um, what else can be done with the Arecibo telescope? The Arecibo telescope spends most of its time doing radio astronomy. Uh, we study uh, objects, mostly hydrogen gas, in our galaxy and in other galaxies. We study pulsars. About 75% of the time is spent doing radio astronomy. But uh, another 20% is spent studying the Earth's atmosphere, mostly the upper atmosphere, the ionosphere. And a small fraction is spent studying solar system objects, the, the kinds of so things that we're do doing. So how do you do this? I mean, how do you study the, uh, the upper atmosphere, solar system objects? Uh, you, I, I believe you have a radar mode. Can you tell yes. us more about uh, this? Arecibo is one of only two places in the world that have radar, a radar system. So instead of just looking at the light coming from the objects in the sky, we can actually send the light out and then look at the light that comes back. So it's like having our own flashlight. And because we send the light out, we know a lot of, we know exactly what we send. And so we can learn a lot more from the light that comes back. So is that what you're doing tonight? Yes, that is what we're doing tonight. Um, there's an asteroid called 2008 SV11 that was discovered last October, and it's coming close to the Earth um, tonight. And I, I don't know if tonight is the absolute closest, but it's about 0.05 astronomical units. That's the distance from the Earth to the sun. So it only takes light about 55 seconds to get out to the object and come back to us. So, so it's very clever. Bombarding this asteroid with your own radiation, then bounces back from the asteroid. How can you learn about the asteroid this way? Well, we send a single frequency of light, a single color of light to the asteroid, and then when it bounces back to us, the we receive not just that frequency, but frequencies slightly around it because the object is spinning in space so the part that's coming towards us gets shifted to to the blue a little bit and the part that's spinning away from us gets shifted to the red so what we see isn't just a single spike it's it's a um, it's spread about that and so the amount that it's spread tells us how fast the asteroid is spinning uh, that's really neat uh, so you can also probably determine the distances in the orbit. So can your observations help actually finding asteroids that could hit the Earth? Well, it tells us about them. We don't actually discover asteroids here, but the ones that are discovered using optical telescopes elsewhere, we can look at them and by looking at how long the light takes to get from the asteroid to us, we get an improvement of the orbit immediately uh, that tells us a lot more accurately exactly what that asteroid's path around the sun is like. So that way you could actually predict whether in some time this asteroid would, uh, would hit us. That's right. This